can assign judges pursuant to Article 165, sub Article 4 of the Constitution. There is no doubt that this was the most contested issue in the subject application. Article 165, sub Article 3, and sub Article 4 of the Constitution provide for impanelment of benches of an even number of judges as follows. Permit me not to go through that. Uh, in dealing with the above issue, courts have taken two diametrically opposite positions. One of them being that the assignment of judges is a constitutional duty which can only be undertaken by the Honorable Chief Justice. As such, the Honorable DCJ cannot assign judges under Article 165, sub Article 4 of the Constitution. The other position posits that although the duty to assign judges is provided for in the Constitution, its implementation is administrative and that duty can be undertaken by the Honorable DCJ. In Kenya Medical Research Institute versus AG, which was a three judge bench of this court, held as follows the court, paragraph 37. Therefore, by ex uh, empaneling this bench, the Chief Justice was carrying out his constitutional mandate as opposed to similar functions under the former constitution, which were hinged on the constitutional provisions and were merely administrative. End of quote. In Lena, Conchella, and others, which was a five bench, five judge bench of this court, the court went ahead and described the role of the Chief Justice under Article 165.4 as constitutional as, as opposed to a merely administrative uh, function. It uh, also said it is our view that a constitutional mandate of the CJ can be judicial, administrative, or political, and the current constitution does not indeed state that the Chief Justice is the head of the judiciary which embodies all these functions. The learned judges in that impaneled bench then found that the constitutional mandate exercised by the CJ under 165.4 of the constitution is an administrative function. The court also elaborately dealt with the issue as to whether such an administrative function could be undertaken by the Honorable DCJ and in the end the court rendered itself as follows. A court, uh, paragraph 78, uh, it therefore our finding that constitutional function of the CJ to assign benches under Article 165.4 being an administrative function can be performed by the uh, Deputy Chief Justice when the Chief Justice is for good reason un un unable to perform. End of quote. The petitioners in these matters also cited the decision in Okoiti versus JSC and another is constitutional petition number E408 of 2020 as addressing the position that the assignment of judges is a constitutional mandate and the sole preserve of the Honorable the Chief Justice. The decision was delivered by yours truly who is part of this expanded bench. We have carefully considered the said decision. One of the issues therein which may be said to have a bearing on this matter was whether the Honorable CJ could rely on Section 5, Subsection 4, and Subsection 5 of the Judicial Service Act to authorize the Honorable DCJ to serve as the acting Chief Justice when the Chief Justice was proceeding on leave pending retirement until when a succeeding Chief Justice was appointed. As the matter did not deal with the integrities of the aspect of assigning of judges, but rather the constitutionality of the actions of the CJ who was exiting service, we respectively find that the issue is not at par with what is under consideration in this instant application. The said decision is hence distinguishable. Returning to the matter at hand, it is imperative to look at uh, the various terms uh, which come to play in this matter, including the administrative actions as well as uh, judicial actions. I, we have uh, 
uh, gone through that. I do not uh, think there is need for me to read all that. It's in the ruling. And I proceed to uh, state that from the above discourse, we do not find any difficulty in affirming the position that a constitutional mandate of the Honorable Chief Justice can be judicial, administrative, or political. We further find and hold uh, that the constitutional mandate exercised by the Honorable Chief Justice under Article 165, sub Article 4 of the Constitution, is a constitutionally administrative function. We shall now consider whether the function of the Honorable Chief Justice under 165, sub Article 4 of the Constitution, can be performed by the Honorable DCJ. Article 161 of the Constitution establishes the office of the Chief Justice as the head of the judiciary and that of the Deputy Chief Justice as the Deputy Head of the Judiciary. Article 163 of the Constitution creates the Supreme Court and designates the Honorable Chief Justice as the President of the Court. The Deputy Chief Justice is the Deputy is to deputize the Chief Justice and is also the Vice President of the Court. Article 170 one of the constitution establishes the judicial service commission or the jc as one of the chapter 15 commissions the honorable chief justice in jc is the chairperson and in this scenario and unlike the constitutional architecture in articles 161 and 163 the honorable dcj is not the vice chairperson of jsc Running alongside the foregoing are the functions of the Chief Justice and the Honorable DCJ as provided for in Section 5 of the Judicial Service Act. The provincial states as follows. This is in respect to administration of the judiciary. I do not need to uh, read through all that. I proceed to... Uh, to say that uh, the decision in Lena uh, Conchella also dealt with the definitions and uh, various types of deputies and ultimately rendered itself uh, in the following manner. Uh, I think this one I should quote. But paragraph 77, it says, It has been canvassed before us that where the Constitution intends the Deputy Chief Justice to act on behalf of the Chief Justice, it has expressly stated so. Specific examples cited were Articles 141.1, 144.4, 148.4. These provisions fall under Chapter 9 of the Constitution that deals with the Executive. This chapter does not have a general provision as regards the deputization of the Chief Justice by the Deputy Chief Justice as is provided for in Article 161 to be in Chapter 10 of the Constitution on the Judiciary. Hence, the provision of the deputization of the Chief Justice in Chapter Number 9, a holistic and purposeful interpretation of Article 161, 2B of the Constitution and Section 5 of the Judicial Service Act, leads, to, leads us to the conclusion that the Deputy Chief Justice substitutes the Chief Justice where necessary. End of quote. In the end, the learned, ju the learned judges found that found and held that the constitutional function of the Honorable uh, Chief Justice to assign the benches under Article 165 for the Constitution, being an administrative function, can be performed by the DCJ when the DCJ is for good reason unable to perform this function. On our part, we have carefully addressed our minds to the issue. We find that there was a deliberate scheme by the, by the drafters of the Constitution for the Honorable DCJ to deputize the Honorable CJ as Deputy Head of the Judiciary and as the Vice President of the Supreme Court, but not in the JSC. Such was an emphasis on the various manifestations of the constitutional duties bestowed upon the Honorable Chief Justice and the Honorable DCJ. As such, the prevailing legal position is that the Honorable DCJ can deputize the Honorable CJ in discharging judicial functions and in the administration of the judiciary as an arm of government 
but cannot do so in respect of the affairs of the JSC. Our attention has also been drawn to the provisions of Article 259, sub-Article 3b of the Constitution, which states uh, as follows. This uh, refers to construing the Constitution, and sub-Article 3 provides as follows. Every provision of this Constitution shall be construed according to the doctrine of interpretation that the law is always speaking, and therefore, among other things, be any reference in this constitution to a state or other public or uh, public office or officer or a person holding such an office includes a reference to the person acting in or otherwise performing the functions of the office at any particular time emphasis or otherwise performing the functions of the office at any particular time the above provision creates three tiers in which constitutional functions can be exercised. That is, by the substantive office holder, or by a person in an acting capacity, or by a person otherwise performing the functions of the office at any particular time. In our understanding, and again as the background of the doctrine has stated, the drafters of our constitution were deliberate about ensuring that the administration of duties and the application of the constitutional provisions are continuous and seamless, recognizing the necessity for offices and their functions to be performed even in transitional or extraordinary circumstances. Such an interpretation avoids technicalities and vacuums that could disturb the functioning of state offices or public institutions, thereby promoting administrative efficiency and upholding the principles of constitutional governance. The provision reflects the broader principles of the rule of law and good governance, which require that state and public offices continue to function effectively, even during periods of transition or when the substantive office holder is unavailable. It in turn promotes legal certainty and administrative efficiency by ensuring that all constitutional responsibilities are carried out without disruption. For this reason, the functions of Article 165, sub Article 4, in our view, and in as far as the same relate to the Office of the Chief Justice, also includes the Deputy Chief Justice acting in the capacity of the Office of the Chief Justice or discharging its functions in an interim acting or auxiliary role. At this point in time, we also wish to point out that the Honorable Chief Justice empaneled this very bench on the 14th day of October 2024 to deal with six constitutional petitions that inter alia challenged the first petitioner's impeachment process in the National Assembly. The said petitions are still current. On the 18th of October 2024, the Honorable DCJ empaneled the same bench to deal with constitutional petitions challenging the impeachment of the first petitioner in the Senate. To us, it is beyond peradventure that the Honorable DCJ can assign judges under Article 165, sub Article 4 of the Constitution, whenever he or she is discharging any of the constitutional functions on behalf of the Chief Justice. In this case, we do not find any fault in the Honorable DCJ assigning judges to sit in this bench more so when the Honorable Chief Justice has not raised any red flag. Thank you. All right. Um